Welcome to story time, fruit lovers. I'm Orange, and this is... Huh? I expected you to say your name, but that has a nice ring to it, too. <laughs> I'm getting the silent treatment, apparently. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Hey, Orange. Remember yesterday when I yelled at you for playing your kazoo nonstop for 12 hours? Uh, well, yeah, it was the annual kazoo marathon. What did you expect? How else am I supposed to raise money to buy more kazoos? <laughs> well, I yelled too much and now my voice is gone. Looks like you'll have to do today's story, Puss in Boots, all by yourself. All by myself? Woohoo! But before you get too excited, know that I'm gonna be right here next to you making sure you stay true to the story as written. Ah, oh, man. Whenever you get off track, I'll ring my bell. That means you need to go back to telling the actual story. Got it? Yes, I got it. All right, let's ring a ling and do this thing. Here's the famous story, Puss in Boots, which is, of course, about a boots-wearing platypus. <laughs> okay, okay, he's a cat. You're no fun at all. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a young man. He was the youngest of three sons. They were named Mary, Curly, and Mo. They were named Huey, Dewey, and Louie. All right, their names don't matter, but I choose to give them the nicknames Biff, Beef and McGillicuddy. <laughs> now, each brother was given something when their father passed away. Biff got Dad's 86 Corvette. His electric guitar. All right, the family mill. Beef got the family spaceship. Jar of teeth. All right, mules. And that left McGillicuddy with just a dumb old cat. Except the cat wasn't dumb at all. He was actually super clever. Also, he could talk because one day he told McGillicuddy he needed a pair of Air Jordans. Clown shoes. High heels. Okay, boots. And as soon as McGillicuddy got him the boots, that cat got to work on turning McGillicuddy's life around. The first step he took in his new boots was to go meet the king. <laughs> Get it? Step? Cause he's got boots? Oh, right, you can't talk. <laughs> well, Puss started bringing gifts to the king all the time. Gifts like annoying orange merchandise, a Nintendo Switch, TNT. Okay, so maybe I don't know what kinds of gifts they gave him, but Puss and the King got real chummy. Then one day, Puss was out in the woods with McGillicuddy, and he heard the King's carriage approaching. Puss sprung into action and told McGillicuddy to get naked. Oh, that's really what he did? Wow. Huh. Well, I thought it would just be a funny thing to say, but sure enough, he asked him to get naked. Man, this is one pervy story you gave me to read, Pear. <laughs> anyway, when the king's carriage came by, Puss ran out and told the king that robbers had taken McGillicuddy's clothes. The king was super chummy with Puss because of the Nintendo Switch. Um, indescribable gifts Puss had given him earlier. So the king gave McGillicuddy some fancy clothes and let him ride in the carriage with his beautiful daughter. She fell in love with McGillicuddy immediately because he was still mostly naked. Okay, she loved him because he was a great guy or whatever. But meanwhile, Puss raced ahead to a castle and tricked the mean shape-shifting ogre who lived there into turning into a mouse and then Puss and Boots ate him! And do you know what that ogre's name was? Shrek! Okay, it wasn't Shrek, but wouldn't it be great if it had been? Would've kept the lid on Smash Mouth's career. <laughs> Anyway, when the royal carriage pulled up, Puss told them the castle belonged to McGillicuddy. King was impressed, and his daughter was definitely impressed. McGillicuddy went along with it too, and they got married based on lies. But I guess that's how it was in those days. And as for Puss in Boots, he became president of the United States. He went on to eat so many hot dogs he exploded? Okay, fine. He lived happily ever after with McGillicuddy. To be continued. <laughs> Just kidding, the end.